I'm Deb Carson. This Fox National Sports Report brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The parts you need, unbeatable service, full throttle savings. Advance Auto Parts service is our best part. Tiger Woods still with a share of the lead. Second round of the Memorial. Tiger 5 under through 11 holes. Co-leaders Spencer Levine and Scott Stallings already back in the clubhouse also at 5 under par. Rory McIlroy having a rough round. 5 over on the round. 4 over on the tournament through 13 holes. He will likely miss the cut if things don't change quickly for him. New York Giants announced today that defensive end OCU Minora has agreed to a restructured contract with a team. Turns, though, were not disclosed. All former NBA forward Orlando Woolridge has passed away. Died last night at age 52 following treatment for a chronic heart condition. Sports news every 30 minutes or as it happens on Fox. This is State Senator Barry Loudermilk. Once again, we find ourselves in the middle of an election season, the time that the people across this land can exercise their right to have their voice heard in their government. But your voice is only heard if you take time to go to the polls and vote. So I encourage you to vote this year, but also I encourage you to know the candidates for which you're voting because they become your voice to the government. This is State Senator Barry Loudermilk, and I approve this message. This message was paid for by the Barry Loudermilk Election Committee. At Richard Barnes Concrete, we take pride in our work and would like the opportunity to be of service to you. With 35 years experience, Richard Barnes Concrete can handle any of your concrete or masonry needs. Some of our services are tearing out of existing concrete, driveways and patios or repairs and alterations to existing work. No matter the size of job, we can help. We also have a commercial construction division. Visit us at GAConcrete.com or call 770-546-0138. Violent content. Parental discretion is advised. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Barto Sports Showcase on News Talk AM 1270 WYHZ. We've got Will Sprague in the studio who's dancing like a ballerina in the corner. Will, it's time to do the show. Sit down. Man, you know, I was really getting into the music. Just about time I finally, you know, whatever. Yeah. Fine, we'll do talk about sports. Yeah, I mean, if you'd rather Jeez. talk about dancing or something, go no, ahead. No, no, no. No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. no it's no, all right. right. Go ahead. I'm not being paid for it, so. <laughs> no, no, go. It's, it's all right. Go ahead. No, I'd rather talk about sports. Are you sure? Mostly. In that bright green shirt you got on? It's our Jet Smoothie shirts. I know, but it's still bright green. Well, you're wearing bright green headphones. I'm not complaining about you. God, yeah, well, welcome to the Barto he- Sports Show. My headphones are awesome. Yeah. I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. Before we get any things in particular, yeah, I want to say thank you to a couple of our sponsors Ace Hardware Carswell. Located on West Avenue. Go out and see them. John Payne and the, and the crew out there. They've got Dixie Choppers. They've got the cheapest prices on propane tanks and refills, pool supplies, lumber, stuff for the garden. Go out and see them. They, uh, they're, they're great folks out there. Everybody out there will help you find anything you need. That sounds like all the supplies I need to put together. Good Fourth of July thing. Wood, propane, you know. What are you planning on doing for the 14th? Fireworks of display, man. The stage, the propane, light it with. You know, those big old torches running out. The propane, the light it with. Dang right. Won't you just, if you're going to go, go all the way. I mean, go big or go home. I mean, that's that's fine with me. But I mean, <laughs> I'm Mary Elizabeth, I'm sorry. Um, right now. I hope you've got good insurance. I about to say, she just upped the insurance policy. Oh, okay, then she's fine now. Yeah, she's good. And if it I, backfires. Then. <laughs> if it backfires. <laughs> and also, Louie's Cafe. Which, hey. uh, do you know anything about that place? Yeah, they they sell jet smoothies. Really? That's why I'm wearing a bright fluorescent green shirt yeah, that says Jet Real Fruit Smoothies. Yeah, I bet you are a real fruit smoothie. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Come down and see us there in the Goodwill Shopping Center on Highway 41 in Cartersville, Georgia. So, Wilbur, what do you want to get into tonight? Uh, trouble. 
well, then you're going to have to do it by yourself. I'm not getting in trouble tonight. Yeah, right. Well, I just I do want everybody to call in. Give us a call, 770-382-1270. You can talk about what we're talking about, or you can bring up a whole new topic. We'll discuss it. Uh, just whatever you want to talk about, we want to talk about it with you, too. So give us a call, 770-382-1270. First story I ran across earlier earlier today was the SEC the SEC yep, had their wants big conference. a playoff of the four best teams. Yep. Uh, Not of the conference champions, the yep. four best teams. The, four, top, the top four from the BCS. Yeah, and the story pretty well go, is, is pretty, pretty well going to work out that, that if the <laughs> top four teams, just like this, this past season, mm-hmm. two teams are going to be from the SEC. If not three. <laughs> you know, two, <laughs> two, three, however many. There are going to be at least two teams from the SEC, and that's just going to be that much more money for the conference, for all the other schools. So, yeah, I'd push for it, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had the – this year was a very unique situation, or last year, this the, last year's BCS, where you had – Teams play for the conference championship and then turn around and play for the national championship. It's a very rare and odd thing. You know, of course, it would be two SEC teams. Well, yeah. But um, I like playoff systems. I think it gives a lot of schools a fair chance to get into, especially, you know, and I don't really, I'm not a big Notre Dame fan, but Notre Dame's not in the conference. If Notre Dame was number three, they are there. They don't have a conference championship to play in. Exactly. And say you know number one and two win their conference championship. Well, they're out. It's like man, we had an undefeated season. We don't have a conference championship to play in. We don't get a chance at the at the BCS game. So it puts people like that. You know, Notre Dame hasn't been in a position to win a BCS championship since I was in diapers. But <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even in diapers. You yet. weren't even. You weren't even a thought yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. But um, I like the playoff system. I would love to see it go. Now, the thing that you're going to see, and especially me, because I'll be you know kicking and screaming when this happens, you're going to have teams like USC. Yeah. That plays nobody powder puff teams all year. Nobody. They're ranked number three because, yeah, they beat everybody 50-1. to one, Then they pay, play Stanford and lose. But, you know, it's okay because they, they beat everybody else by 50 points, so they should be number two in the nation. They couldn't beat Carswell High School. And... I that's going to be the problem of it, but they're going to get eliminated in the first rounds, and it's just going to put different people in the BCS spotlight in those high stakes games. I mean, the last six years, yeah, it's I been mean, Florida, LSU, and Alabama. That's it. Yeah, it really has, I, and it it will still consistently be an SEC team because the conference is still that strong and getting stronger. Yeah, but it'll give someone else a chance. To get up there, you know, like Absolutely. like Notre Dame, or and then maybe we could even stop this, you know, yelling and screaming coming from Boise, Boise State, or yeah. TCU, or yep. even though they're joining BCS conferences, mm-hmm. it might keep them from yelling and screaming. Oh, we got we got left out of out of this championship game because we're in the Big East Conference now instead of the Mountain West. Yeah. So well, I'm what? sorry. If TCU would have played Alabama last year in a BCS game, Run LSU game, would have the way they played LSU, times 30. They, they wouldn't have they got, got past got the 25-yard line. They'd have got run over. It would have been a, a, a horrible humiliation for that team. And last year, Alabama was an exceptional football team. They you know, And Saban's going to deliver good teams year after year. Oh, yeah. yes, last year was the best I've ever seen Alabama since I was born. Uh, since I started watching football, that's the best I've ever seen Alabama. They were mechanically sound. They were in sync. The wide receivers, and I mean, the entire offense was in sync. Yeah, and the entire defense was in sync. It was, yeah. and Georgia could do the same thing. Yeah, you know, they're, they're they're like that one step yeah. away from being LSU able to do could that. have done the same thing, but their quarterback and their and the rest of their offense did not communicate. No, well. their their quarter their quarterback situation was iffy at times. Yeah, in my opinion, Lee should have been playing. But yeah, I, I completely agree. He should have c- continued to be their starting quarterback because he took them to the West West Virginia and won. He's yeah. he's taken them, you know. I believe no, against Oregon and yeah. won. The guy and I don't remember his name because I'm a big LSU. Jordan Jefferson. Yeah, Jordan Jefferson. He his problem was communication. You could see the frustration coming into him, especially you know second quarter of the BCS game. That was their biggest setback. Yeah. And we've got a caller. You're on the Bartow Sports Showcase. Who's this? Uh, what's up, my brother? What's going on, Todd? Listen, 
Les Miles is the luckiest man in the world. I'm telling you. All right. I, you know, stupid doesn't get him again to describe him, but he is lucky. Yeah. Hey, he's, he's got, got more BCS championship titles than Jefferson. I do. Jordan Jefferson's fantastic athlete. If oh. he's going to play anything else, he should have been playing strong safety. I agree. I mean, right. Jefferson was a great athlete, but just not the He had communication issues. He had trouble making audibles. He had trouble reading the defense. And when he was trying to make those adjustments, you know, he, it he was like it was like necessary ball. roughness. He, he snapped the ball, turned around, there's nobody there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, it, yeah. Yeah. Jared Lee was a leader on the field. Yeah. And they were, they were in, they were in, you're right, they were in sync when they had him on the field, and had they left him on the field all year, they you know, might have been. They might have come out on top. No, I think they would have come out on top. And I don't know if it they would have left him on the field. He would have taken them all the way to the BCS champion. I think he was good enough to the rest of the team. rest of the team was good enough to complement his weaknesses. To complement his weaknesses. Yes, but because I mean, he, he was... Have, he's not an athlete. No, no he's, that was his biggest issue. But he's got, you know, he's got, he's got some way in the ears. Yeah, you yeah. can't cram two guys together in one uniform. I mean, that's, that's they, every they football coach in the world would love to be able to take uh, this player's good at this and this is good at this. Let's just squish them together and put them in one uniform. You can't do that. Yeah. Well, but yeah, I think Jared Lee, I think if they would have played him all year, they wouldn't have made it to the SEC championship. They probably would have lost to Auburn. Uh, I yeah, think it probably would have happened. I don't know about that. I don't know either. It's, it's all speculation. Of course, you're Les Miles and slapping himself saying, saying, dang it, if I'd have put him in there, we may have won. But, yeah. you know what? They, they still got to go to the SEC championship, and they still play the BCS game. LSU was still an outstanding team. They had a very good defense. Um, Alabama just out, out, they just beat them, and they outcoached them, and they outplayed yeah. them. And that's just that's the way. That's how exactly you win big right. games. And I'm ready for one of these little, yeah, little throw happy teams that keeps complaining all the time. Go play a big boy schedule from start to finish. Not yeah. just in the very beginning of the year. I would and then go play your powder puff. I would love to take Boise State and trade their schedule with Georgia's or Tennessee's or anybody in the SECs and see how they do week after well, week. It, bottom line is if Boise State or TCU if they're playing an SEC if they're playing eight SEC opponents they ain't gonna Eight. make it. Uh, they don't have. Th- 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 there's gonna be hair teeth and eyeballs scattered from here to there, and by the, by the sixth game. Oh lord, they won't have anything left. Yeah, you know, tip, and and this is true in, in the you know in the Big Twelve and in the uh, Pac Ten. They play hard teams. It's, we can't say that everybody. If you're not in the SEC. You don't play anybody because that's just unfair and that's not true. There are a lot of good teams in this country. But yeah. you have a lot of smaller conferences or teams that play a lot of games in mixed conferences. They play the weaker teams in those conferences because they're closer matched to their team. And they're going to beat them, but it's going to be a better game. Now, sometimes they just play really weak teams. But that's a scheduling issue. If you want to play in the BCS game, if you want to go to the big game, you got to pick the teams on your schedule. You've got to pony up the money. you got to pay the dollars to get in the conferences, and you got to play those big teams on a well, consistent I, basis year long. Yeah, when they play out of conference teams, they're picking up. Yes, yeah, they're playing. They're playing powder puff ball. But when, when you have to, you have to look at that in, in, in balance with their conference schedule. Yeah. Nobody's conference schedule is like is like this. Nobody. Well, no. we, we have the most top 25 teams of any conference year in, year out. It's been that way for the last, you know, seven, eight years. I mean, that's been a growing thing for the SEC, and that, a lot of that has to do with recruiting. And, you know, the SEC has just built momentum and strength. We've seen this in other conferences throughout the history of football. You know, you have conferences and teams and regions that just play strong ball. Um mm-hmm. But as of late, as of the last seven, eight years, the SEC has picked up momentum and, and recruited these men to play and came up with top teams. So, yeah, you're playing in a normal season, you're playing at least three or four top 25 teams where you aren't doing that in other conferences. Look at the draft. Look how many, look how many SECs are getting drafted. Not just first round, but, but you know, second and third day, they're, they're, they're picking SEC teams. Yep. Because they know they've been through the war. Yep, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we appreciate the call, Todd. All right, man. Glad y'all got to talk to me. It's yeah. always a pleasure. Be Thanks, good. Todd. All right, bye. Bye. bye.
and that's a good topic to talk about. You know, yeah. and this playoff system is going to give some of these teams that have played a tougher schedule, or not, maybe they've played a power tough schedule, power puff schedule. They're going to get their pants pulled my, out of front my, of everybody. One of my best examples of you know an SEC team at the you know at their peak playing a team that's screaming and hollering, hey, we should be in the talk for this or the talk for that. It's when Georgia played Hawaii. Yeah, in the Sugar Bowl. And that they, was a disaster they for Hawaii. ran them over like yeah. they were playing me and you, and that was it. Yeah, and, and we've seen that time and time again with some of these teams. It's like you are a good football team. Let's not discredit you, but you are playing in a different group. Yeah. You're playing in a different region, and you're playing a different skill set of players. And, um, you know, I think we should find someone in the playoff system who's going to cut some of those out to put them in. Say, okay, you're the best. Play them. And we got another caller. You're on the Bartow Sports Showcase. Who's this? Hey, John. This is Greg with Pure Trade Network. Hey, Greg. What's going on? Not much. How y'all doing? Not doing too good. bad. Good. I wanted to uh, call in. I was listening to, listening to your show and uh, thought I'd call in and give you something to give away. All right. Uh, if, if you think of a good, uh, think of a good tough trivia question, uh, you know, pertaining to sports, and uh, we'll, the winner will get a uh, fifty dollars gift certificate to Pokey's Hometown Sports in Rome, Georgia. All righty. Um, what we'll do is uh, we've got about seven minutes left in this segment. We'll do it right after, at the, after uh, the break. At, right after the break. Sounds great. Just let me know who it wins. I'll make sure I leave their name with the. Uh, at the counter there at Pokey's Hometown Sports. All right, Greg. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you very All much. Right, appreciate you listening. Stuff. All right, you too. Bye. That was that was mighty nice of Greg. Mm-hmm. Greg was just here. Uh, come check on check on things. He's got a show on Saturday mornings uh, mm-hmm. of the Pure Trade Network. So if you're you're up and about, tune in about uh, eleven thirty on uh, Saturday Saturday mornings. Listen to Greg and uh, talk about how uh, businesses can uh, actually do trade barter service for service and save a little bit of cash so uh i'm usually scrambling eggs and making you know yeah pancakes and <laughs> that's everybody's trying to squeak it in right there before the 12 o'clock oh, yeah. cut off. oh yeah <laughs> eggs grits pancakes now <laughs> i can't i can't lie I've, I've been one of those before hey, too hey and we appreciate them I, that's what married me if people want breakfast I'll, I'll make it oh yeah breakfast for breakfast for almost lunch on saturdays <sighs> oh it's always have it's you ever had a, a pancake idea. sandwich yes isn't that awesome? It is. That's have, awesome. You, have you ever had a, uh, it's kind of like, it's a pancake wrapped around a piece of sausage. It's kind of like a corn dog. <laughs> yeah, good. That was one of the best ideas. <laughs> Those things are awesome. We are uh, way off topic here. <laughs> maybe we should start serving at the ball field. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, you know, and we talked about this before the break, and this is um, kind of related, kind of not. We're talking about conference uh, rivalries, out-of-conference play. Um Ohio State canceling the uh, Georgia home to home game. Yeah, home um, and home. Game. I, I did. I did. I really wanted to bring that up. Um, I was on a website earlier today, uh, the Bleacher Report, mm-hmm. and they they had asked the same question: Who should Georgia replace? Since the uh, the talks with Ohio State went south because of the whole, I think it's. Whatever conference during the big what Big Ten in the in the Big Ten. All right, yep. the big I think it's the Big Ten Pac twelve. Yeah, they're saying the Big Ten and Pac twelve will be having a partnership, so they canceled the games as a result of it. To me, that's kind of a weak uh, response because that would have yeah. been a highly touted game. It yeah, would have been a w- good game to watch, they, especially with Urban Meyer being the coach now. Oh yeah, he may have has to had something to do with that. He may not have wanted to started to play SEC rivals because eventually. He would end up playing Florida. Oh yeah. Oh, oh so Lord, and yeah. that could be a big reason for it too. But the thing and, is, and, they and, were, they weren't even going to play it till 2020. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's who knows. Um, and if you got some input or who you think who you think Georgia should play to replace this game because it, it needs to be a good out of conference team. We don't need to play any lightweights. We need to play a good out of conference team because it gives us that out of comp. You know, it gives us some different. Looks, give us some different players. So if you if you have any input on it, seven seven zero three eight two twelve seventy, or any of the stuff talking about the the playoff system, or or your ideas or thoughts on it, because this is a hot topic, and it has been for the last several years, um, especially some of the teams that have stayed in the number three spot, and number two spot, and number two and number three playing a conference championship and knock each other out, or number one, number two, or whatever. 
Yeah, I mean, they, I just I wish they'd have went through with this. I, I really do because as much Ohio State's one of those schools that have been to the national championship. They've won. Yeah. They've been close, and then they just started getting run over. And yeah. then there was a lot of controversy. And then there's a lot of people suspended, and they're still doing nothing but saying, yeah, we're still the best. We'll prove it. Ohio State's one of those teams. They made the national championship back in 2006, 2005, 2006, uh, no, 2006 no. 2007, somewhere in there. I think it was like And they played Florida. 2000. Yeah, yeah, they was the it, first time that uh, Florida won. Yeah, theirs. And, and in Florida, ran away with them. Oh yeah, um, it was a it was a good game. Ohio State played, a, you know, put up a good fight, but they just could not contend with Florida's defense. No, um, this would be a good opportunity for Georgia to see a different look. Different teams in different regions play different styles of football, and uh, of course, Urban Meyer by twenty twenty one. If Urban Meyer's still there, hopefully his health will stay. You know, I mean, I don't ever wish ill will for someone like that. Hopefully, I'm concerned about this decision for him. Yeah, because he had some serious heart issues playing yeah. when he was coaching for Florida, and he's an all or nothing coach. And that's what I liked about him. He's an intense coach. Yeah, he's an intense coach. He's a good coach. It's just hard to even. Li- it's hard to like him when he's at you know Florida. Kind of like Spurrier. Spurrier's a great coach. I don't coach. care if Spurrier was coaching the Challenger League. <laughs> I wouldn't like him. <laughs> Well, I saw him at the Masters a few years ago, and it was like loser. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't you can't deny Spurrier's not a good. He coach. is a He's genius a, offensive. He is an uh, amazingly just great offensive coach. Do I like him? No. no. Will I ever like him? <laughs> no. That's a big no. But he's still a good coach. He is a good coach. You have to respect the man, but you can you can still not respect like him. his ability. Yeah, you, you can respect, respect his ability, man. but not what he does. Uh, I remember the first time when he took over South Carolina when they played at Georgia. That was the funniest, loudest game I think I've ever been to at Sanford Stadium. That everyone was, you know, yelling at Spurrier, and you know, they had a little. Someone had a counter up. How many times did Spurrier throws his visor? They're flipping it up and you know, flipping the numbers over. That was such a funny game. Oh <laughs> it was only God. a one-time thing. Is and now he's got this self-control going on. So watching Spurrier on the sidelines isn't no, near as fun not, as it used it's to be. Nowhere near as much. He's getting fun. old. He is. He he is, and I, I don't think he's able to take what he used to be able to from. We need to give him some colleges. grouchy old man juice. So he'll start throwing his <laughs> throwing his visor. I mean, it's nothing better than watching those headphones and the visor go go flying. flying. I, I saw the headphones kicking the dirt. I saw the headphones <laughs> skip across the field one time. It was hilarious. <laughs> but going, you know, Georgia's not going to play Ohio State now. Nope. Bleacher reports come out with about six teams that they think Georgia should play. Who out of these six? Who do you think they should? Miami, Florida, no. West Virginia, possibly. Notre Dame, yes. Oklahoma, mm. Florida State, or Boise State. I think Boise State was a good game. Georgia played horribly against them this year. Boise State yeah. brought their A game and they whipped yeah. them. I mean, that was a, that was a coaching player. They whipped Georgia. Yeah, There's, you know, disrespect. No disrespect to Boise. I think it's a good rivalry. It's a high octane offense versus our high octane defense. Now, our offense should be better this year. Oh yeah, than it was last year. Hopefully, especially in the first couple games because it's going to really matter this year, especially since we're playing Missouri and South Carolina out of the out of the, out of the gates like that. Yeah. Um, I like Notre Dame. I do too. Because that's an old school. That's an it's a that's ri- it's an old a, rivalry. It's too. an old rivalry. It's also a fairly highly watched game. It's a it's oh, a yeah. very well watched game. It'd be good exposure for Georgia. Um, I think the biggest thing is that Notre Dame is a non conference team. It's not going to matter one way or the other what happens with Notre Dame. The only thing that that'll matter is BCS standings. Sure, with, for both of them, but that's about it. It'll give Notre Dame an opportunity to play a, a team that's been a consistent top twenty five team. Um, Notre Dame has struggled. I think again. I think it's a good exposure. I think it's going to d- draw funds, you know, money for the b- both schools for that game. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, know, you got to look at those things like that. We can oh, talk yeah. more about about the break. Yeah, We'd love to get some calls on it because this is a hot topic in Georgia football right now. Oh yeah. Well, we'll be right back. Uh, we're going to take a short commercial break. But you're listening to Bartow Sports Showcase on News Talk AM 1270 WYXC. Dover.
Driver's One Mile Oval track has not been kind to Denny Hamlin. With only two top five finishes to his credit, Hamlin says it's because... It's a track that carry, you carry a ton of speed at, that uh, you make one small mistake and it magnifies it greatly. For Martin Truex Jr., this could be the year he wins again at Dover, thanks to... The race cars that we've got... Uh, with the team I have behind me, they've done such a great job all year long. I, I do really feel like that's probably the next track where we have a real shot to get back to victory lane. And for Greg Biffle, even with two wins at Dover, this track remains... A challenging place. I think that's one of the reasons why it kind of stands out. Officials from nearby Dover Air Force Base putting out the welcome mat for drivers from all three NASCAR racing series to various events at the base this week. And Dale Earnhardt's daughter, Taylor Nicole Earnhardt, got married last weekend in Mooresville, North Carolina, at the family's private estate. Fox in the Fast Lane, I'm Marjorie Tashina, Fox News Radio. I'm Toby White, GNN Sports. Back to the road for the Atlanta Braves. They will face Steven Strasburg and the Washington Nationals tonight in D.C. Mike Miner will get the start for Atlanta. After opening the NBA's Eastern Conference Finals with back-to-back -back losses in Miami, the Celtics have home court advantage for tonight's third game in the best-of-seven series. Scott Stallings teed it up for today's second round of the Memorial, holding a one-stroke lead after yesterday's six-under par 66. Phil Mickelson is not on hand. Lefty withdrew after an opening 79, saying he needs to deal with some mental fatigue ahead of the U.S. Open, which is two weeks away. And second-seeded Maria Sharapova lost just two games in today's second-round win that inches the Russian a step closer to a French Open title, and that would complete a career Grand Slam. Also today, Sloan Stevens assured there will be at least one American woman in the fourth round of the French Open. That's sports. I'm Tony Wyke on the Georgia. Do you have an electrical project or problem and don't know who to call? JDH Electric is your one call for all of your electrical needs, commercial, industrial, residential. Let us shock you with our service. Call today, 770-607-6900. Hey, this is Mary Elizabeth. And Will. Louie, come back here. <laughs> Anyway, while Will chases Louie down, I want to talk to you about Louie's Cafe. We're located in the Goodwill Shopping Center right across from the hospital on Highway 41. We're open from 6.30 to 2, Monday through Friday, and we offer a full breakfast Saturday mornings. Here, you hold them. <laughs> we have fresh sandwiches, delicious salads, and the best coffee in town. With our indoor and outdoor seating, drive through call-ahead ordering, and a full line of catering, we make it easy to fit breakfast or lunch into your schedule. We may not be the best thing since sliced bread, but we are the best thing on it. Come, Come see, see us at, at Louie's Cafe. Cafe. Woodland Hills Golf Club at Carter Grove is a semi-private 18-hole golf club located five minutes south of Cartersville, Georgia. Come and play for the day or join the club and play as often as you like. Visit us at woodlandhills-golf.com or call 678-605-8585. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. That's right, everybody. It is time to play the game. And Will you almost, I had this fell. Mr. He Burns almost fell out of his chair. I, he says it, time to play the game. I think of Mr. Mr. Burns, those little fingers there, like, time to play the game. <laughs> you look like Mr. Burns. I don't look like Mr. Burns. He was about to fall apart. I, I, hey, if I'm Mr. Burns, that means you're Smithers. I don't closet think so. Weirdo. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Welcome back, everybody, to the Berto Sports Showcase. Get uh, Before we get into anything else, I want to say thank you to some of our other sponsors. Red Top Mower, they're located 8 miles south of Main Street on Highway 41, just before you get into Cobb County. Go out and see Miss Patty, Wes. Wes, I'm still sorry about what I said a couple weeks ago. And uh, <laughs> It's not going to let you drive any of their vehicles, so... But Patty would let me. No, she wouldn't. Yes, she would. No, she would. If she? I if I went, Miss Patty, I just want to test drive this HUV around the parking lot. Can I? She, she would say, I need a credit would, check, insurance information. <laughs> They've got good insurance. Oh, golly. It's not like I'm going to drive it out of the parking lot. Not intentionally. That, not intentionally, and I would not drive it down 41 
towards the house. Towards the house either. <laughs> so, you know, I would not do something like that. Yeah. I, I really would. On purpose. On purpose. But go out and see Miss Patty and the crew out there at Red Top Mower. They're a licensed Husqvarna dealer. They can help you out with anything you need. Camping, uh, tailgating season, camping season is coming up. They've got great deals on Honda gener- generators. Go out and see them. They're eight miles south of Main Street on Highway 41. That's Red Top Mower. If you've ever, if you've never heard of one of those generators, you got to go see them because you will not hear them. They are the no. quietest, awesomest generators. I was at an event yesterday. They did the 41 uh, food. Food fair. Food fair. Thank you. Brain was not working. And we were out there, and there were several other people out there, Alicia's Barbecue, some other folks. But one of them had one of those generators. And literally, when we're you and I were sitting, John, and we're about two feet apart, there was a generator between us. We were talking just like we're talking right now. Oh, yeah. They're the coolest. You need something camping or you need something, you know, working around where you just need some portable power and you don't want to hear that thing, that big old Briggs and Stratton or Kohler motor just wearing it out. (laughs) It's the way to go. They're great. Great yeah, generators. Yeah, we, we gave one. We gave one away with our uh, college bowl pick 'em contest, and uh, I it's, love it's about that. it's about I think it was a thousand or two thousand watts yes. coming 2, out of it. Watts, yep. And I don't think it took. I think it took less than a gallon of gas, and I think they said it'd run for 12, 14 hours on just yeah. that. They're great little generators. So you're going camping this summer. Or, you know, you you have a need for those generators. You're coming up on. You know hurricane season <laughs> if you're listening down in florida or alabama south alabama uh, or I, I do believe they do ship they do ship they do ship give um, them a call give them a call they're uh red it's redtopmower.com and uh just want to say thank you miss patty and all them down there for supporting us i also want to bring up a very a very big event going on that's going to be going on here in september in uh, Bartow County is the Relay for Life event. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be September 7th. It's the, the day before the Georgia-Missouri game. So I know there's going to be a lot of people plastered at home to watch that one. But the night before, come out to Dillinger Park. What? Tailgate party. Tailgate party. Exactly. Can't I, you I, read my mouth behind the big microphone? No. I mean, really? No. <laughs> but... Uh, we have a team here at WYXC. Um, we've got a Facebook page. It's Team WYXC at, on Facebook. Go out, go check us out. Um, we'd really like your help uh, being on the team. Donations, getting donations up. All the all the money's going to go to the Relay for Life. Um, our theme this year is going to be Georgia football tailgating. So we're going to have our booth at Dillinger Park. It's going to be uh, football tailgating. And we're gonna have all sorts of stuff to do out there. Uh, some good, some all sorts of good fun stuff to do. That's a Come, Friday night. Yes, it is. A so Friday I guess night. that means we're gonna be broadcasting from out there then. No. May, well, we might. We haven't got. We haven't no. got all that. All that details Never yet. Mind. I mean, we can. Never mind. But I think about the time that we would be on. I think is when they have the team walk and the survivor walk, and any, so we don't. We'll get some it. live interviews. We're running around the track chasing them. Are you tired? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. But go to fa- go get on Facebook, go to and search Team WYC. We'd appreciate everybody's help that you anybody that can give us any help. We appreciate it right now. Just we we're just trying to raise as much as we can for the relay for life. All right, we've got a contest that we're going to do with uh Mr. Greg Detcher from the Pure Trade Network called in the first half and said that uh he would donate a $50 gift certificate to Pokey Sporting Goods at Mount Berry Square Mall in Rome. It's a great sporting goods store. We go up there. They, he's got ammo and archery stuff and football equipment, baseball equipment, a lot of fishing equipment, uh, athletic clothes, uh, team apparel, different things like that. And we've got a question. Wilbur, would you like to read the question? Well, I didn't write it down. Oh, you wrote it down. I, I wrote it down. Handwriting. You're the one that came up with it. Really? <laughs> how many, since we're talking on our, our favorite coach, Steve Spurrier, how many national championships has Steve Spurrier won in his coaching career anywhere? Total. Any, anywhere. Cumulative. Total. How many national championships do, has Steve Spurrier won? Coaching. Coaching. Yes. Give us a call, 770-382-1270, and you... If you give us the correct answer, you will win the $50 gift certificate to Pokies. I know the answer. Can I have the gift certificate? Nope. Because you looked it up the same time so? I did. That automatically knocks you out of the running for it. Jeez. 
Besides, you'd have to get up and run out in the other room. Can I look up another question and ask it on the air, then run over? <laughs> you'd have to run out of the room and call in. Seven seven zero three eight two twelve seventy. Give us a call. You want to talk about? Uh, we've been the topic we were talking about before we went to the break was um, the the playoff system. Who Georgia should play or replace Ohio State since they got scared and ran? <laughs> Anything you want to talk about with football? Because this is a t- hot topic, especially since the SEC conference just—I guess it just concluded in Destin. I don't know if it's still going on or not. I think it just concluded. Yeah. Okay. Or, or if you want to talk about you know the Braves, we I'd like to get a little bit into the Braves. The Braves are having an interesting season. It's a real roller coaster ride this year for a Braves fan. You want to call and talk about that? Seven seven zero three eight two twelve seventy. While you're on the line, we'll see. Give you a chance to win a fifty dollar gift certificate to pokies okay i I gotta bring this up it's topic we've talked about before multiple times and someone we don't like just so that i can make fun of them a little bit more steve spurrier wants to play pay his players to play he wants to legally pay him he wants to legally play uh pay him (laughs) he's been trying to do this for years i know uh, suggesting it and, and i think one of the biggest driving forces is you know the nfl is such a big attraction for younger players to, you know, opt out of their senior year and go straight to the draft. Um, <clears throat> I personally don't like it. It just opens Pandora's box for all kind of fraud or with oh, this. Yeah. Oh, it's going to make it too easy to for get, this to get to more more happen. Oh, yeah. These players are being paid to play already. They're getting a college scholarship to a university. Otherwise, they may not have been able to go to. Oh, no. 100% full ride to, to, to University of Georgia ain't cheap. No, good they Lord. They get no. housing, meal plans. They don't need to be paid anymore. They're getting something now if they're smart enough to finish school instead of opting out. Yeah. If they finish They're going to get school, something that will be... pay them for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Because you ain't playing football forever, brother. No. We all can't be Brett Favre and just keep, you know, going and going and going until, you know, every time you throw the football, your hair falls out. Really? You went there? I went there. You went there? But, he, you know, him and Dan Marino, I think they both played till they were in their 90s. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, they started getting uh, AARP, AARP checks, yeah. checks in the mail while they <laughs> they had them mailed to the football stadium, not to their personal address. So, That's too uh, funny. But, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's a good idea. It's going to just open. I mean, okay, so, yeah, we'll start playing. He suggested like $2,000 a year or something like that is what he proposed. To begin with, but he's wanted to go up to 3500 to 4000 Doesn't this sound like politics to you? Oh, yeah. Well, we just want to spend a little bit this year, and then the next 20, 30 years, let's, uh, you know, I'm sorry, not 10, 20, two, two to three to five years. Let's up that up to, you know, 50000 Then we'll get it up to a million and then we'll be playing our college players a million dollars each for this, so we can get the top players in the country. Oh yeah. Now, if you can't afford it, it's okay. You don't have to participate. What? But we want to because <laughs> we oh, want the better players. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just, it's just not a good idea. We got a caller though, Wilbur. You're on the Bartow Sports Showcase. Who's this? This is Billy. How are you? What's going good, on, Billy? Billy? How are you? I'm well. Hey, you know. Uh, I think Ohio State backed out and didn't Tennessee have a home and home with them also two years before Georgia did with Ohio State? I think so. Um, I'm not positive on that one though, Billy. Not 100 percent sure on that one. But I think they did, but I think they backed out of it too. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They, um, I think they backed out of all four of them with the SEC. Ohio State does not like playing an SEC team, just like USC doesn't like. USC had an opportunity to play an SEC team three or four years ago in the in the Rose Bowl, and they opted for somebody else so they could just absolutely pistol whip them, which they did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, and I don't remember when uh, USC went to Auburn, though. It really beat Auburn up pretty bad. Yeah, well, you know. Yeah. But, you know Eagle. <laughs> the yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, no, get out of here. I'm, I'm nauseous myself. <laughs> Well, Billy, do you, do you want to try to win this fifty dollars Pokies gift certificate? What the question? What, the question is: How many national championships has Steve Spurrier won in his coaching career? National championships. National, national championships. championships. Um, I always have to say, I think he just won one. That That's is right. right. He only won. He won one. Surprisingly enough, he he, he only won. Now he had a lot of conference champions. He, I think yeah, he's won yeah. about six or seven conference championships, and he's been to the national championship game more than once. But he's only won one. Yep, he has six conference championships and one 
National Championship in 1996. So good well, job, Billy. That? Got you a fifty dollar gift card to Pokey Sports. Go up there and get you some uh, ammo or some fishing gear. Or any pretty well. Get you a new hockey stick. Oh yeah, yeah. hockey stick. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I can I can use some more ammo with all this. Uh, you know, all this talk of all these um, the zombies. Dead folks oh yeah. Yeah, and they've got some. They, he's got some great prices on ammo. Uh, we've gone up there and got quite a few boxes from him before, and he's got some of the best prices on ammo around. So, uh, do you know where he, uh, is? It, he's in Mount Berry Square Mall. Okay, well I can find him. Okay, I know where the mall is. Well, that you got half the battle won already. <laughs> All right, we well, uh, sure appreciate the call. Appreciate it, Billy. Yeah, great show, guys. Thanks. Thank you. All right, bye. Bye. It's always good to hear from Billy. We see him around town now and then, and uh, yeah. Billy's Billy's a good sport. We'll pick at him a little bit sometimes, and uh, <laughs> he, he puts up with it. Now, getting back to the whole pay and the player things, I think that just opens Pandora's box to when's it going to stop. Then you're and, and once it's in place, this is like a this is like an entitlement. Once it's in place, when are you going to stop? How are you going to stop? Yeah, how are you how are you going to regulate it? Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, how are you going to regulate something like that? Oh well, I didn't. We didn't pay him cash this time. We gave him a car. Yeah. What? No. How is so. that the same? Yeah. It's 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 a bad idea. Oh, it's Bottom a ter- line, it's a, terrible it's a bad idea. idea. I understand Steve Spurrier's motive behind it. He wants to retain players. Yeah. I, I, that I that I can understand. That I can understand. But actually giving these. 18, 19, some of them are going to be older, some of them are going to be 17, three, four, five thousand dollars at the beginning of the football season. They'll blow it tonight. They'll blow it like by the, by Sunday, the end of that night. You know, they give <laughs> yeah. it to them Friday. It's going to be gone Sunday. Yeah. And, uh, and they're going to be in jail probably too. We see this, especially when you have really talented uh, baseball. You know, baseball is one of the few sports that can pick kids from high school yeah. and, and take them straight into the big leagues. I had a friend of mine in high school that went straight to uh, the big leagues, paid for Chicago. Um, these kids are 17, 18 years old, and they're getting thrown down huge contracts. Not no more. Yeah, well, you know, big money. Oh, yeah. They don't know what to do with it. And most of the times they're going to play ball for a while and they're going to make money, but they're going to blow through that money so fast they don't know what their, their heads are going to spin. They're kids. They're 18 years old. Oh, yeah. That's why the first thing they do, they buy the biggest house they can. They buy as many cars as they can. All on credit. All on credit. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's it, gets out of, it gets out of hand. Someone needs to – first off, they don't need to do this at all. I mean, paying you in college to play football no. is not a job. You're getting paid to go to school with, the, play op- football at, with the opportunity opportunity to play football. Yeah, that's what's going on. Yep, absolutely. not the other way around. You're not getting paid to play football and a chance to go to school on top of that. Yep, no, I agree. But. Uh, ESPN's got a poll up. Should student athletes and revenue producing sports receive thirty-five to four thousand dollars a year to cover college expenses? Right now, sixty-seven percent of seventy-two thousand people say yes. Really? Yes. That I, I, I just I cannot fathom that. Okay, so now you have schools like TCU, or you have schools like Baylor. You well, the thing is, you're going to get into a Title Nine thing right then. Right off the bat, because what if you're on the volleyball team? Doesn't bring in nearly as much money as you know the football team. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Oh yeah, pull, you're, are you gonna pull from everybody else's budget, or are you just not gonna pay them? Or is it gonna start? Is this gonna open Pandora's box again for other sports? Yeah, like okay, hey, if you come play football, basketball, and track and field, that's gonna be six thousand dollars a year. I could pay you. Instead yeah. of two thousand dollars a year, yeah, you know Tennessee doesn't have that good of a track team, so they're only going to pay you four. Yeah. You know, because they, you know, because you're not going to play, or they don't have. Or it. you know, we'll, if you go ahead and say yes now, I, I might be able to slip in a little signing bonus for you. It, it's it, it's going to be drafting for the NFL in college. Yeah, and it's gonna it's going to be a bad, the, and it's going to corrupt. It's going to be explosive. It's, it's going to corrupt the game too. That's the Absolutely. one thing about college football I love is that. 99.9% of these kids go out and play because they love the game. Yep. 
not because they're getting paid for it. And you start paying them, it's going to corrupt the game. Absolutely. Well, and again, like I said, you know, look at Baylor last year. I mean, Baylor kind of came out of nowhere. They had a great quarterback, and they really pulled their team. But oh, yeah. Baylor's not a big school. No. Baylor can't pay $2,000 a player for every player. If they do, everybody's, you know, season tickets are going to go up by $1,000. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, TCU, Boise State, these teams that have pretty good teams, but they don't have the kind of money that Texas does and Ohio State and Notre Dame and Georgia. You know, these teams that... No, they don't. They still don't want to have to afford that money, but they could if they had to. I mean, if they really, really had to, yeah, but... It's going to squash these other teams that say, yeah. you know what, we're not paying someone $2,000 to play football here. Now, there's going to be... There's pools of athletes that won't do it. Conferences will collapse. Yeah, it's going to be... It, the rep repercussions will be horrible. And once it's there, you'll never get rid of it. Oh, no. If it's, if it ever goes through, you will never get rid of it because no. it just... Kids will be like, all right, I'm just not playing. Yeah. Uh, I'm going a, I'm to a go straight to the NFL. Yeah, I'm going to find someone that will play me. Or, well, they can't go straight. Well, they could. I guess they could walk on free age. They aren't going to make it. No. But, they, you know, they, they it, what it's going to do, it's going to take the best players. And, you know, if you're being recruited and they say, hey, look, you know, we just recruited the top 25 people in the nation because we're paying them all top dollar. Yeah. And we want you to. It's going to suck all of it down. You're going to end up with teams that, that are able to raise the most money to have the best players, oh, yeah. and that's just not the way it should be. Well, I've got I've, I've got a different topic I want to talk about. It, it's a little bit of a sad topic, but then again, it's being used as, as, as something good. Craig Sky Hertwig um, from the University of Georgia. He played in the 70s. He played uh, in, for, in the NFL uh, for, for a couple years. Uh, died this past Wednesday. He was a bar, he owned a bar in Athens for 32 years. He went to Georgia. I think he played for the uh, Detroit Lions for about four or five years, and mm -hmm. he came back to Athens, op uh, opened a bar. He died Wednesday, and a lot of people that knew him down there, are, it's just kind of it was on just kind of out of the blue thing. I don't know if he had been sick for a long time, or he. I think he died of a heart attack, matter of fact. But the family is asking in in lieu of flowers for Craig to donate donations to be made to Craig Hertwig, the Sky Spirit Award, to be given to a UGA student. It's a fund that they're trying to put together in his name yep. to be given to a UGA student who basically shows, you know, just they're an outstanding student. It doesn't have to be a football player or anything like that. So they're trying to, they're they're making this into something that's going to be good for the school and good for students that show that they're an exceptional individual. Yeah. Um, but the donations can be given to the Oconee State Bank in Watkinsville. Um, the big city down there, south of Athens there. <sighs> Watkinsville. <laughs> nice bed and breakfast down there, though. Oh, yeah. It's a nice place. Our, our buddy Kevin, he lives in Watkinsville, technically. <laughs> Not by much. Not by much. I mean, <laughs> technically... It's in, he's in Watkinsville, but mm -mm -mm. Um, you can uh, you can search any of the the Georgia groups, or you can just get a hold of us if you want to try. Uh, if you want to donate to the fund, just uh, get on the Bartow Sports Showcase, and I'll direct you in the uh, appropriate direction. And uh, we just uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, to Craig's uh, family that uh, he he left behind. But um, Back to some more happy news. Back to some happy news. I had I I really wanted to talk about Absolutely. that because that's that's just something kind no, that's of cool. cool. That I hope that fun goes somewhere and, and they're oh, able yeah. to do that every year. That'd be great. Um, good news for Georgia is this is always a fun game to go to and to watch, especially to travel to. Georgia Auburn game is staying on the schedule. That was something that at the SEC conference that was on the table. It may have been gone, you know, taken away for a while. Um, we see that, that we've seen that with Alabama. You know, we've gone to the twice a year every four years um but that they have approved it uh six to one to one that that they will continue from 2013 and beyond um and uh six, i think six division games well it's the south's oldest rivalry 
It is, and it's a good game. Auburn, Georgia is always up. I mean, hard pounding. Always a good Auburn game. Auburn plays dirty ball, and I hate that portion of it. They <laughs> always do. They always I'm do. waiting for the pocket knives to come falling out of their shoes sometimes. Pocket knives, roll of quarters. Yeah, I mean, but it's a it's a fun game. The blackout, I remember the blackout? Yeah. When they when it didn't went so effective against Alabama, but it was very effective against <laughs> Auburn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it. that was, that was the most – I have a picture of it at the house. Yeah. That was the most intense – game I've ever been at. It still gives me chill bumps thinking about it. If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, I'm sorry. You missed the best game at wa- Sanford Stadium I in history. I watched it. I watched it on TV. I was there, baby. I don't it was it. amazing. So that's a good, that's rivalry staying alive. Glad to see it. That's always a fun game. That's also a season determining game for us because we're east yeah. west. We're, that, that right there puts Auburn because we're usually neck and neck by the time we play. Yeah. If Auburn's having a good season, George's having a good season. If we're one loss, they're one loss. It's always right there, and that says, are we going to hold the number two spot or the number one spot? That's one of those games. So it's yeah, it really glad is. to see it, and that's that's great. That was a good decision by the SEC. High five by Will. I, oh yeah, I, I've been I've been wondering about that one, and uh, I, I got about thirty seconds. I got to say this: James Franklin, head coach for Vanderbilt, said about two or three days ago that he'll only hire a coach if he has a hot wife. <laughs> he got called out on it and said, "Oh no, oh. that's not what I meant." Boy, there okay, you go. I, I had to get that out. I had That's to get hilarious. that out. I've been laughing I'm about, about to find that. that story. Um, but Wilbur, I appreciate it. Another Friday come and gone. Always and, a pleasure. Uh, we'll see you next week. Fastest hour during the week, man. Yes, always is. But I appreciate everybody listening to Bartow Sports Showcase on News Talk AM 1270 WYXC. Carter's bailed Yardy. You're fired. <laughs>